Thank you very much for staying. Welcome back now to the very first story. Some economists want Finance Minister Konofuriata to present a supplementary budget rather than a mid-year review. Joy Business understands the Finance Minister is now expected to present the mid-year review next Monday instead of Wednesday. But some of these economists say that Joy Business spoke has engaged, maintained the current developments warrant drastic changes in targets and expenditure patterns. George Riafe has more in this report. Joy Business understands the Finance Minister Keno Ferrata will give an update on how the economy has fared so far in terms of up-to-date revenue numbers as well as expenditure. He will also give the true state of the economy but will not review the whole budget or present a supplementary budget. But economist Dr. Eric Ossesibe tells Joy Business there should be a review of these numbers if government wants to consolidate the credibility that is currently enjoying. I don't think there is a problem at all. Uh, if you look at the policies that have been put together so far, then I don't think there is any cause for alarm. I think uh, in regard to the size or the magnitude of debt, obviously you don't expect it to be coming down that drastically in this short period of time. It will take uh, a bit of time. Uh, perhaps as you are able to fiscally consolidate, uh, gradually reduce your fiscal deficit, and that reduces your uh, borrowing requirements, then obviously you will be adding less and less to the existing uh, debts. And uh, as you amortize the, the maturing debt, then you realize that the magnitude will be coming down. But so long as you are going to actually finance a fiscal deficit of 6.5, uh, to GDP, then of course uh, you have to borrow. Economist Dr. Joe Abe tells Joy Business the current development warrants a supplementary budget. The media review, if that is why it is not, what I find not very palatable is that there's too, still too much partisanship in the country. And therefore, people will look for what will the government say and then they, they take their positions. They're not really interested in the consequences like you're talking about bailing out banks that could threaten the whole banking system. If the government is going to come up with the media review that incorporates this commitment to, to completing the program on schedule, it will have to come with some expenditure cutbacks. Mm -hmm. It may have to come with credible ways in which we can raise our revenue. Okay. Now, what will not be in the national interest is instead of these whatever they come up with being placed in context, even if it means postponing the startup of some of the election promises, huh? it is important that whatever we do is placed in context. If not, you start the jeering um, because it will be bad enough, in my view, that the government will be saddled with having to impose austerity, which is not they are doing. If the minister heeds the call of these economists, then it might be a good time to update parliament on the exact date that it wants to end the IMF program. Now, expectations are high for a reduction in lending rates following yet another policy rate cut from 22.5% to 21% by the Bank of Ghana last Monday. The central bank reduced the rate by 150 basis points, citing the positive economic outlook. There's more in this business desk report. The high expectations follow assurances by Governor Dr. Ennis Adson that the banks will respond accordingly in due course once their challenges, such as the high costs of funds from depositors and non-performing loans, are addressed. But there are doubts about this, given the previous reductions, which have yet to result in lower lending rates as expected. Economist Dr. Eric Osei says this only calls for more action from the central bank. I think it's a collective responsibility on the part of government, on the part of central bank, on the part of government itself. I think that um, uh, time has come that we have to really look at the, uh, the, the build-up of the uh, base rate, you know, that's the formula. I think it's too rigid downward. Uh, some of the key uh, uh, building blocks have to be re-looked into uh, so that it will make it more flexible. The, one of the things that this new governor should do is to 
be able to persuade uh, the uh, bankers uh, to have some kind of moral suasion and uh, prevail upon them to reduce the monetary, uh, the average lending rate, so that the, the 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 good side of the reduction will be trickled down to investors and the household uh, to be able to invest and to expand the economy. Otherwise, it will amount to nothing. It will not have any productive effect on the economy. Professor Godfrey Buckben also believes it's high time an all-inclusive approach was adopted to achieve the desired results. There are other interventions in the market, like the Credit Reference Bureau and all of that, which, is, which, which are designed to perfect collaterals with, with loan amount and all of that and iron out the, the delays in, in, in establishing ownership in properties and all of that and also reduce long court proceedings okay, over uh, titles of properties and all of that. So you are looking at all of this collectively. So if we're able to do all of that collectively, then we do expect that banks would also respond in, in a certain measure. That, and that is why we're saying that it is important for the central bank to reinforce their decision and the signaling effect of their last meeting. Once you do that over a certain period consistently, then the market begins to have confidence in the economy that, yes, uh, it's time to also ease uh, or take their legs off the accelerator and begins to ease the the cost of doing business in the economy. The latest policy rate review brings to 450 basis points or 4.5 percentage points the year-to-date reduction of the benchmark which somewhat influences the cost of credit. And in another development, the Bank of Ghana has maintained some banks that are in financial distress have until September this year to improve their financial positions. This follows reports that two of the nine banks that are said to be in serious distress could be closed down by the central bank, even though the Bank of Ghana would not want to comment on the said two travelled banks. The head of banking supervision, Raymond Amanfo, tells Joy Business, liquidation will be the last option. You are saying, and are thinking that the only action available to the central bank, and for that matter, is liquidation. The governor was very specific; said that liquidation is a is a last option. Right. So what we are doing is that we have given them the, 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 the time as prescribed by the law to resolve. And, and that is what they have to September, right? Yes. Yeah. Can, you, can all these issues be resolved before August 30? That's yeah, where the yeah, next board meeting you, is supposed you, to Let's get there. Let's get there. The governor talked about being tough going forward. Uh, how tough would the Bank of Ghana be? You see... Uh, you you have to talk to the banks. They, they, they describe the head of banking supervision as a hatchet man. When you sanction and they come back to the press and ask that, oh, you have to give it them time and that. Somebody is talking about, oh, why don't you give the banks more time and that. The issue is that when the rules are violated, there are sanctions to it. We apply the sanctions to its logical conclusion. So on market places, to take a short breather here, we bring to you an investment tip. This is brought to you by Daffing Finance, Deposits, Investments, Borrowings and Advisory. Some considerations for investment. You already know that the general rules for investment normally does not apply to everybody, but your circumstances determine how much you can save for the future. However, take note of the following age profile and general investment advice. In your 20s and 30s, expenditure on liabilities is high, while savings or investment is low but should not be nil. In your 40s or 50s, Expenditure on savings or investment is high, while liabilities should be minimal. On retirement, expenditure is about 80% of your early and prime life income, while savings or investment is nil. Investment Tips was brought to you by Dauphin Finance. Deposits, investments, 
borrowings and advisory. Welcome back to the marketplace. Now, corporate governance expert Albert Puni is impressing on businesses the need to do more in identifying and developing new leaders to replace old ones when they leave office. Such a succession plan, according to him, is crucial in the growth of businesses. Speaking to Joy Business, Mr. Puni lamented how new leaders are usually chosen in many Ghanaian companies and called for a change to this. The fact that you have started a business doesn't mean that definitely this, your son should really take over from you. You are looking at the larger goal of the organization. Uh, you want these organizations to be in existence even long after you, you are passed away. So what you have to do is that if your son is not capable of taking over, then you can even groom somebody who is working with you or have been working with you for a very long time. And then that person is able to take over the company. Your main aim is to see the company grow to the future, not coming out to hand over the company to your uh, son who cannot, or your daughter who cannot actually do what it's supposed to do. So at least it's a very good point for us to learn from the multinationals. They are able to think ahead and then know that the money director wouldn't be there for the rest of the age. So they have to groom somebody and then it is the grooming that we really have to look at. Because if you want your son to take over from you, then you have to groom the, your son. Now he also encouraged entrepreneurs to list their companies on the Ghana Stock Exchange, saying it facilitates the succession plan. I think once the listing requirements uh, specify that you should have a board and the board must plan for the company like that. I think if you list your company and then you have very good board directors, they can plan the succession for the company. So listing is good, but as to whether we want to keep the control of the company, that is the issue. Because if you list, sometimes you, you lose the control of the company and in Ghanaians we don't really want uh, losing control like that. We want to keep it the family way and then it goes into the family. But I would encourage our Ghanaian entrepreneurs to think about listing because it makes the company grow longer than the life of the CEO. One, because you can get funding from the public, uh, you can get good directors and managers who can work for you. Now, there appears to be some tension between bookshop owners and their counterparts who sell along some pavements in the central business district of Accra. This stems from what the bookshop owners describe as unfair competition posed to their businesses by the several vendors. Shop owners accuse the vendors of extremely cutting down prices which deter patrons from visiting their shops and rather resort to buying from along the streets. They, also con they are also concerned about the scramble for customers on the streets among the vendors. Here's more in this report. The desire by many to bring home vehicles, both used and new ones, is normally cut short by some unpleasant experiences of other people concerning payment of duties at the ports. These experiences include overpayment of import duties due to wrong calculation and during payment of harsh demurrage penalties and some non-declaration of appropriate figures by clearing agents. However, with the introduction of the duty to go up, all these harrowing experiences will gradually be relegated to the background. The inventors of the duty to go app says it affords importers of vehicles the right to calculate the precise duty before they are shipped. Chief Operations Officer Arnold Dokonu explains. Duty to go is a simple application that allows importers um, who want to import vehicles into Ghana to be able to have um, an accurate estimation of the cost of import duties uh, before they actually even purchase the car. Uh, what we notice from our previous experiences were that uh, the 
modalities with which um, import duties are calculated uh, are not so clear to most people. People assume it's a fraction of the cost of the vehicle and so on. Uh, and so when they import the cars into the country, they get surprised at the high costs of uh, import duties. And then that's when we start hearing issues of uh, penalties and demorage and cars getting seized and all that. Basically, the GRA uh, is governed by an act, OK? Um, that act is a public document, OK? Um, the act spells out um, with some accuracy what kind of vehicles have what kind of taxes applicable, OK? What we did is that we took the act, reviewed it, uh, and converted that act into a big calculator, OK? So we have systems that fetch the vehicle data, uh, and we test the vehicle data against the calculator. And so if your vehicle is a, a 1.8 liter engine um, manufactured in a particular uh, year, we apply the tax applicable. There are a lot of other parameters involved, but I'm not trying to go into the nitty gritty, but basically that's how it works. The chief technologist of Crust Solutions highlights further on the new app. For now, if you are in, in America, for instance, or you're in Canada, you can download, but your subscription, you cannot do the subscription because of the payment mode. Payments now for subscription is via mobile money. Now, as, as we speak, now, as I said, we're working on getting the digital platforms, other payment platforms. We are, yeah, we are trying to put up other payment modes for Visa, for MasterCard, I mean, all other credit card uh, payment modes, so that those who are not in Ghana will be able to, do, to, to, to subscribe easily by using their credit cards. Yeah, our app for now is handling cars that are coming from America. So we mainly have dollars in there, so I like to take care of those who are out of Ghana in the diaspora, Ghanaians living abroad. So they basically, they will look at dollars. They would like to see things from the dollar perspective, they will do the calculations in dollars. So as I said, we have the dollar uh, function, we have the dollar page, we have a CD um, 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 page as well. So it's your choice to actually um, toggle between uh, the CD or, or you do your, your, your dollar, you pick the dollar, or you do the calculation by putting, inputting the, the rates that's applied, yeah. applicable, and then you get the CD as well. Yeah. For now, the app will be applicable to cars coming from the United States market as efforts are underway to include vehicles coming from the Asian and European markets. All right, so that was an expose on a new app that has been developed to facilitate the calculation of import duties on vehicles imported from the United States of America. Now, moving on, there appears to be some tension between bookshop owners and their counterparts who sell along some pavements in the central business district of Accra. This stems from what the bookshop owners describe as unfair competition posed to their businesses by several vendors. Shop owners accuse the vendors of extremely cutting down prices which deter patrons from visiting their shops and rather resort to buying from along the streets. They're also concerned about the scramble for customers on the streets, among others. There's more in this report. Central business district to purchase stationery from bookshops usually end up with their hopes dashed as vendors along the streets heckle them to rather patronize their wares. But why is it the case anyway? Prince is one such shop owner, and he tells Troy Business he and other traders who pay huge sums of rent for their shop often have to awfully adjust prices to remain competitive in the already strained business. It's true that we have a lot of bookshops over here, but depending on how everybody is doing business over here, and those who are outside there or down there, they normally come for us because we are the hostess. We give to them to go and sell at the down there, and they rather affect our business. Because when the customers are coming, they pretend, they tell them they shouldn't come to the bookshop. So they will come rather and pick for them. Go to check how the business is going down there. Because someone will not mind who will come and can someone even smash your customers from you. So sometimes you have to go down there and be checking what is going on there. We have many bookshops around here. So if you don't, if we're sitting down, we're expecting customers to come inside. No, they will not come. So you not make any exactly. So you have to go be out there. Maybe I see where my sister is standing. You can be standing. This time it's passing. You can call, oh, hello, nine bookshop or something, so that you, you address attention to them. The sale of books and other stationery wares in the central business district of Accra is not just about cost, but also its availability on the market. 
we again met Maxwell Lavender, who does brisk business on the pavement. And he says his objective is to have every kind of book a customer would want to purchase on sale in a bit to make his store the one-stop shop customers look out for. From this time, the sales are a little bit low because this time they are, unless they, the school open, they, after, after a vacation, then when they are open school, the people may patronize over it. Our prices are moderate because uh, the, the only thing people may come here and they ask you the price and give the price because here is competition. So it might be a little bit down than the shops. So when you come here, we give you a, a little bit, the price is down than the shop. So you give the price, the person goes to shop and ask the price and will come back to you. Some come direct by. When you show it, they will return. Some will go to a shop car, they will come out. Uh, they will ask the prices. Go. Some, some go around and ask the prices before they buy. Unless the thing short. After that one, you go to a shop, you won't get it. So the only thing will go out and find out, find, go out and search for it and come and sell it. That's, that, after that one, the price may go a little bit higher than the normal price. Nonetheless, one development which remains a general challenge is the high cost of locally produced books attributed to the cost of printing, unreliable power supply, as well as inadequate raw materials in the country. Time now to take an analysis of the stock market and we have for you a research analyst from Gold Coast Fund Manager Management, uh, Beta Atubiga, with more. Last week, the stock market did very well. We had more equities gaining as compared to the losers. Um, only two equities lost on their week open prices, and that happens to be um, GGBO, Guinness Ghana Bureau Limited. It lost a peso, uh, two pesos to close the week at um, one Ghana City's 43 pesos. And Golden Star Resource, which is one of the equities that's not actually very active on the stock market also lost five pesos last week to close at one cd 90 pesos per share and if you look at this uh, that was a drop of 1.38 percent and uh, 2.56 percent respectively on their week open prices and if you look at the gainers we have stand chart making the ways to be the top absolute gainer on the stock market um adding three cd 68 pesos to investors capital and that was quite high in one week um, Stanchat is one of the equities that we're looking forward to making further gains this week and among other equities that I'll be looking at shortly. Uh, as his bank was part of the gainers, BOPP continues to gain. It went up by 5.88% last week. And we had Cal Bank, EGO, EcoBank, Ghana, and some other equities um, adding up to investors' capital. Standard Chartered Preference Share, Standard Chartered Bank Preference Share also made ways um, to add up 19 pesos to investors, and that was quite um, interesting and very, very good for the financial sector or financial stock index on the stock market. And <clears throat> sorry, if you look at the major indices, that's the composite index and the financial stock index that we have on the Ghana Stock Exchange. The composite index appreciated by 7.78% to close the week at 31.30% YTD, that's a year to the returns. And if you look at the financial stock index, it closed the week at 33.80% after appreciating by 6.66% on week open level or return. And this is to tell you that the stock market is doing very, very well. Its equities are returning very high gains to investors. You shouldn't be left out when it comes to the stock market. But the downside that we had last week was the volumes of shares that traded on the stock market. The total volumes of shares went down by 21.15%. And the total value of shares that traded also depreciated by 52.23%. Despite this, we still saw some equities adding up positively to investors. So look out for these equities. Uh, contact us and we get to the best advice when it comes to the equities that you need to invest in in these periods where the stock market is doing extremely well. Now, the NPR rate has also come out. It's been, it's been reduced, and uh, we know there's an inverse relationship between the stock market and interest rates. When interest rates are going down, the stock market tends to do very well, or investors change or turn their focus, uh, focus to the equity market or the capital market. And this year is going to be a very exceptional year. We're going to see the stock market do very well. Last week, Friday, I mentioned that it's possible that we might even end this month with the stock market inching close to about 40 percent 
year-to-date return that's for the broader market index so we should look out for the stock market and get the best equities that we need to get now on the equity market now we also saw that we're looking at some equities continuing to add up to investors capital i've already mentioned standard chartered bank uh, we're looking at cow egl bopp to continue to gain and bopp the main reason being that uh, the commodity is doing very well that's palm oil is doing very well on the commodity market and we're expecting that to influence its prices and um, rainy seasons, prudent management decisions that are being taken to actually um, help the company is going to actually reflect in its share performance on the stock market. So BOPP is doing extremely well. It's the highest returning equity now on the Ghana Stock Exchange. So you could look out uh, for BOPP. It's a buy equity that we actually recommend to everyone that is. All right. Thank you very much. Better to be bringing us up to speed with developments on the stock market and of course what equities and stocks investors must look at. We'll certainly bring to you how the week closes on Friday with more stock updates. And that will be a wrap for this afternoon's edition of the Market Place. Many thanks for watching. My name is Imano Abwaji. We have to be tomorrow for the midweek edition. Have a good afternoon.